Now I'm honored to bring up uh, David Krugman, who has uh, 180,000 and growing followers, very creative photographer, and is the social editor at BBDO. David, come on up. Give a round of applause for this guy. Are you guys awake? Let's go! That way? Okay. Hey guys, how are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> So just by a show of hands, how many people in here have uh, Instagram on their, on their phone? Yeah, so a lot of people. So I'm not going to really explain what Instagram is, but I'm going to explain um, a little bit about how brands are starting to uh, engage in the space and to um, tell their stories on this, on this visual storytelling platform. Um, so I'm, I'm at BBDO New York, and one of the things that I'm tasked with is how do we how do we use this platform in a way that um, is kind of native to the experience? Like, we don't want to interrupt people's experience of, of, of this app. You know, people are following their friends. How do we put our brand in, into that community in, in an authentic way? Um, I'll start with how I got started. Um, I, one day, uh, well, I'll start with key points about Instagram, actually. <laughs> um, so there's a couple key things that I always say to brands, and the first of which is, understanding Instagram as a platform. It's not just a broadcast tool um, in the way that you know, a print, uh, pr print ad or, or radio is. Um, Instagram is a, is a subscription-based, highly visual editorial platform. It's a space for stories. And it's a, sp it's a space where you, um, you need to convince people that um, you're going to make it worth their time if you, if you stick around. Um, it's not hard to convince your friends to follow you. Um, but as a brand, it's kind of a harder sell. It's like, you know, why would I follow, um, you know, a Nike or, or something like this when I know that I'll be mostly be served advertisement type stuff. Um, so it's, it's kind of a demographic that has been advertised through their whole lives. You know, they grew up on Facebook and we want, we are looking for ways to speak to them in a way that, um, isn't directly, uh, you know, an overt advertisement. Um, another thing to note is that there's an ecosystem of highly followed, um, what are referred to as influencers in this space. You heard from Natalie this morning about, you know, if you have 250, if you have a channel with 250,000 subscribers, that's a pretty significant messaging space. So we're starting to see these these people coming in as almost like fragmented media channels that we're hiring them instead of going, you know. Just, Traditionally, we would go to magazines and, and different TV stations. Now, this is a whole new uh, media landscape that we're starting to tap into. Um, these people um, have often built up their own followings by providing exactly what we're trying to provide, which is uh, stunning content and, and a good story. Um, so there's a lot of efficiency in, in kind of bundling your content and your media and saying, hey, can you go create content and then can you amplify it for us? Um, also, you know, adding that layer of, of this advocacy of these uh, influential photographers gives you a lot more authenticity on the platform. Uh, it makes it a little more palatable to, to the community who's watching. Um, so, you know, the bottom line here um, is that advertising is kind of a narrative thing, right? We're, te we're telling the stories of brands. Um, but you can, you can reinforce that story by taking people who already have that following and kind of interweaving it into your story. Like, almost like, um, you know, the brand says one thing and then hires these other photographers to, to give their uh, take on it and driving their traffic towards the brand feed. So this, these arrows kind of represent two, two different stories that are united um, by a common message. So the way I kind of got into this world, um, I was at the museum one day, and I, and I was looking around, um, I was at the Metropolitan, and I was just bewildered at every single person I was looking at had their phone in front of their face. It was like a statue, a phone, and then a person. I was just like, this seems like, of all the places in the world to, to keep your phone in your pocket, like this would be one. Um, but it wasn't really until I took a closer look that I noticed they weren't ignoring the art. They were just engaging, in, engaging with the art and sharing it out to their networks in a way that I had never really seen happen um, with this degree of magnitude before. Um, I've, you know, I've seen people take pictures and, and post them to Facebook, but 
almost every single person I looked at was, um, was posting to Facebook or to Instagram. And the Instagram stuff really made me realize that they weren't being distracted by technology. They were actually using technology to enhance and share their experience um, of visiting um, that space. So um, I got in touch with their social media uh, manager, Taylor Newby, a really smart guy over at the Met. And we kind of came up with this plan to, you know, let's take influential photographers, let's give them complete um, unrestricted access uh, on private tours of the spaces, and they'll create content. And in exchange, we'll just have them, you know, basically give a shout out uh, to the Met's page. Um, this is... This was really fun to do because it was a situation where there was incentive in it for everybody, right? So um, the Met got tremendous exposure. Um, the photographers got uh, access that they really, really wanted. And then I got, to, I got to be there and see all the great stuff that was coming out of it. And I also got to be in the Met as well. Um, I don't know if you can... Oh, yeah, you can read these numbers. But so uh, at New York City is a friend of mine named uh, Liz Eswine. And she has such a massive following. She was one of the first people we brought in. And she took this picture that you see here. And you see it has, I think it has like 17,000 likes. Um, and then right next to that, it says, you know, thanks to at Met Museum. And that links right to the Mets page. And then on the Mets page, they have some of the content that we generated. And so we're really sharing traffic and cross-pollinating here. And the story is that, you know, look at these amazing spaces. When you come to New York, don't, don't miss out on this. And if I had more time, I would dive a little deeper into, into the comments that were being left and stuff like that. But a lot of people were tagging their friends saying, you know, let's go see this when we go to New York. Um, and that was something that we were really going for. Um, you know, it's easy, it's easy in a space like this, like the Met Museum, uh, because there's so much visual content. I mean, it's an institution dedicated to visual content. But how do we, how do we approach this for uh, brands that might not be so easy? So... Um, so these are these are a few of the the shots. You know, this is the team um, on one of the first times we went through the through the mat. Oops, here we go. All right. So for a brand like AT and T, which is not. Um, you know, they don't have as much, they don't have, a, you know, 3,000 years of art to, to display and to, for you to share on Instagram. So how can we add value to this community? How can we incentivize people to follow, follow a brand where it might make them think of their phone bill, right? So let's kind of embrace the creative community in a way that um, is natural to the AT&T brand and is natural to the space that we're, that we're playing in, which is Instagram. So our narrative for this uh, story was, you can learn the craft um, of mobile photography and, and sharing and, and using our network from influential photographers by following AT&T. So we hired people like um, Ravi Vora, who is, uh, I would highly recommend you follow him. He's doing some of the best branded work um, on Instagram. We had him, we hired him to create a series of six lessons, you know, telling people basic, the basics of photography and, and the basics of smartphone photography and how, how, uh, the community can do what he does, but we had him tease those, and then we'd put them, we'd host them um, on the AT&T channel. So he would drive all of his traffic to the AT&T channel, where they could see exclusive content. So you see, we're incentivizing his massive following, saying you can see more of what he does only with us. So that to me was an interesting um, solution to this problem. And at the same time, um, you know, we're getting really stunning content from him for the AT&T page. So we're getting content reach, and adding value to people who might potentially follow the brand. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just going gonna, gonna to run through a few other uh, brands that have done this kind of technique um, of hiring influential photographers to tell stories that accompany a brand story. Uh, Monster.com, this is also a BBDO project. Um, they did a campaign with us called Find Better. It's, we went around the country, we sent um, these influencers to different towns, and we said, you know, when you hit the ground, just go out and try to find people um, that love what they do. Um, and the whole point is that, you know, if you're not happy in your job, there, there are resources and there are tools to find, to find a better one. 
Um, so you can see more of this project with the find better hashtag. Um, NY on air is, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this account, but they, this is a helicopter company that does uh, visual imaging. And they signed contracts with influential photographers, said, we'll fly you for free if you give us content and you give us reach. So this actually got them to over, I think they're over 400,000 followers on Instagram now. And that happened all in the past year, which is, to me, um, a pretty amazing leap. Um, Zagat is another one that um, did this thing, uh, dinner with Zagat, and they're inviting influential photographers to come eat at some of New York's finest restaurants. And, and you know, that same exchange of, of influence and content. Uh, the takeaway here is to thrive as a brand in the Instagram environment, work closely with connected creatives who have proven their success, hire them to create content that fits the platform, and to amplify your brand narrative. We live in an age of unprecedented visual literacy, so work with those who are fluent. Um, and just to wrap it up, if you want to see, I, I put together a list of some of my, some of the people in the community that are doing the most branded work. So I'd say the best way to learn about this is to, to follow some certain people. And I'll just put those up as I uh, walk off the stage here. But these guys are really um, uh, working with brands more than anybody I know. And they're doing really, really great storytelling on the platform. So thank you so much. Thanks for your time.